What's the weirdest thing that you've seen at someone's house that they thought was completely normal? I knew a girl who would get glasses of water and whenever she couldn't finish the whole thing, she would dump the rest on the carpet because it just absorbs it. I went to high school with a girl whose family would dress up their house like a model home being sold or something. For example the dining room table was dressed with a plastic thanksgiving feast, with plastic food on nice plates and fake wine in fake glasses. When you walked into her bedroom the bed was made with top corner open as if she just got out of bed and there was a tray with a fake bowl of cereal and a fake glass of orange juice. On the floor were coloring books and crayons as if a child lived in the room. They kept the place spotless and every room had an odd theme of fake living. Her parents bedroom had quite a few large African animal statues and fake rose petals leading to the bed. When I moved cities in grade 2 or 3 I didn't know anyone. I met someone the first day and he invited me to his house that weekend to stay over. Everything was great. We played GameCube and stayed up until 3am. The latest I had been awake up to that point. He said we had to sleep in the basement so that we don't wake his parents when we went upstairs. We go downstairs with our sleeping bags and immediately I knew something was wrong. The worst smell I've ever experienced filled my nostrils the further we descended. In the corner of the room was a bed covered in what looked like crusty blood and some pus colored streaks. Turns out his mother had a home birth the week before and kept the sheets as a memento. I haven't been back since. You'd think that the baby would be a good enough memento. Whole items of food left for days on the floor. Toddler not interested in that apple? That's fine. Just leave it there on the floor where he threw it. It will work its way under a piece of furniture and out of sight if we give it some time. Once I went to these people's house and there was an entire sandwich sitting in the corner of the living room floor. I was so distracted by it I didn't really hear much of what was said during that visit. I just sat and stared at the floor wick. I was friends with my little league baseball coach's son. One day I was invited to their house for a play date. As I walked through the door I saw a huge framed white cloth with some weird symbol. I didn't think much about it because at the time I didn't know WTF it was. My coach noticed me looking at it as I entered the house and said my granddad wore that. It's been in the family for years. Naturally I was like oh okay whatever and thought nothing of it again. Now that I am older, I realize what it was. KKK robe. Worst part is that I am not white. Worst part is that I am not white. Looks like granddad would agree. When my brother and I were kids, we would often comment that our next door neighbor's house smelled like pee. One day my brother was playing video games with a kid from next door, at his house, and asked to use the restroom. The kid said, we just pee here, and started peeing in the closet. My brother peed in there too, when in Rome. Bathroom machete, because, you know, just in case. Man, it's literally nothing more than a real machete that hangs in their bathroom, so if someone breaks in while you're fighting dirt dragons, you aren't at a total disadvantage. Everyone there was surprised when I said I'd never heard of it. I now keep a bathroom hammer handy, because goddammit, it's a great idea. Had a friend in high school, went to his house for the first time and everything smelled like pee. Turns out he had a dog and his family never bothered to potty train or clean up after it. Everything in the house was covered in old dried up urine and fresh puddles. While I was there the dog peed on my friend's bed and he didn't even care. He literally sleeps in his dog's pee. Even I got peed on. Never went to his house again. We were getting something out of his dad's closet when I noticed there was a ton of expensive electrical equipment in the back of it, all still boxed up. I asked him about it. Apparently his dad keeps everything new he gets for a year before he unboxes it and actually uses it. He didn't know why, and it still boggles my mind. The extent to which the owners had gone to preserve their furniture. Each piece of furniture, including the lampshades, had a custom cut plastic shell draped over it. Every furniture leg had a plastic bowl underneath it to distribute weight across the carpet, preventing indents. The strangest part was the plastic pathways laid out across the floor. These pathways were kind of like plastic carpets laid on top of the real carpet. You weren't allowed to walk on the actual carpet. Instead, you had to walk on these plastic mats that crisscrossed the floor and connected all the rooms to each other. Still undefeated champions of the floor is lava. My friend's dad. When I was a kid I used to stay for dinner as kids do. But the dad would not eat with us. 
the mom would make a plate of food, take it down the hall and slide it halfway under the door to the basement. A few seconds later the plate would slowly slide under the door. Nobody at the house seemed to think this was odd but I thought it was weird as frick. The other odd thing this family did was every weeknight at 7 o'clock on the dot. The family would clear out of the living room so the dad could come and watch Star Trek. Once the show was over, he would go back into the basement and the family would move back into the living room. Freaking what? The father was quiet but seemed to be normal other than those odd habits. The family thought none of that was weird and my friend thought it was funny my dad ate with us at dinner. We had a human skull in a glass case in our living room growing up. It was years before I figured out that was really weird. My mom got it from a doctor friend or something. Just some random head. Not like a relative or anything. We called him Freddy and had to super glue his jaw back on every few years when it fell off. I guess I had repressed the memories but just typing this now I recall touching it and playfully tossing it around gently at times. I'm torn between wanting to respect the dead and really wanting a skull. My friend's mom often threatened to murder the whole family when she was angry. This was very scary to me but my friend hardly thought anything of it. She just acted like that was normal mom stuff. I went to a friend's house and they had their halls lined with grandfather clocks. This was a little weird but nothing major. The weird part came when his dad told me and my friend don't you kids go around telling anybody about my clocks. Now he'll never forget about his precious clocks. My neighbor was super into grandfather clocks, turns out his collection was worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, and that was the reason he didn't want anyone to know. When he passed, many went to a museum. I will never forget as a child visiting my friend's house and noticing the wallpaper they had in his hallways. The pattern was of naked women, throughout his apartment, just little naked women all over the wall. We were maybe 8 years old, and it was amazing. A cow tongue in place of a birthday cake. It wasn't like they couldn't afford a birthday cake either. They just had a cow tongue with a single candle in it. I knew a guy one time who would get completely undressed every time he took a crap. Then take a shower afterwards to really clean up. He'd even do this at other people's houses. I was about 12-13. Visiting my best friend's house for the first time. After lunch, I get the urge to take a dump. So I go to the restroom, do my thing, finish up, and flush. Nothing, nothing happens. I take a step back, flush again, still nothing. So I start freaking the frick out. I'm a kid, I just broke my friend's toilet. I don't have any money to pay to fix it or buy a new one. I'm standing there, sweating, trying to figure out a plan. And after 15 minutes I still got nothing. I finally decide to fess up. I mean, I can't stay in there all day, they'll eventually figure out something is wrong, right? I step outside and sheepishly tell his mom that I broke the toilet. She starts laughing, goes into the bathroom and turns on the water flow to the toilet, waits a few minutes, then flushes. Easy peasy. Everyone, the best friend, his mom, and his sister, then takes the opportunity to start laughing at me because I didn't know it was normal to turn the water on off whenever I needed to use the bathroom. To this day if I'm unfamiliar with a restroom, I always do a precautionary flush just to make sure everything is working the way it should. When I was dating my first girlfriend in high school, I was invited over to her house for dinner and meet the parents, etc. At one point I was talking with her father in his study and noticed lots of old looking phallic objects on the shelves in the room. On closer inspection, they were mummified dongs, dozens of them. Turns out he was a urologist and an amateur archaeologist. One summer when I was about 13 a friend of mine had a friend from her school that invited us over to go swimming in her pool. We go to her place and are shown to her room to change. As I'm changing my friend suddenly whispers what the frick. I turn around and see a bunch of used sanitary pads lined up on this girl's desk. She comes to join us in her room and my friend flat out asks her what the pads are all about. But she says very plainly they're for my dad so he can check that I'm not pregnant. I dated a guy whose family was just odd. They just did things so differently. Sometimes I wondered if they might be aliens. No one the house knew how to use a stove. They used the microwave or ate out. Every cabinet and drawer in the house was always wide open. Like they had no idea you could close them. The rest of the house was clean and organized, which made it all the stranger. 
His mother walked around naked pretty much constantly and took about 10 baths a day. His parents would go to McDonald's to watch TV. Despite having a very nice TV with satellite, TiVo etc. His family had a lot of grandiose tales. Things like they saved two men from a plane crash and how the mother outran a pack of wolves in suburban Arizona. Spent the night at a friend's house in 6th grade. He lived with just his mom. Dad wasn't in the picture and he was an only child. So they had a close relationship. We were having a great time. Until his mom called him for bath time. With her. Like. Together. They even left the door open like it was nothing. They could have been polite and offered you a scrub down as well. Girl from my previous work invited some of us over for dinner. As it turns out, she had removed the toilet seating from her toilet, because it doesn't look good enough with it on. You actually had to sit on the thin ceramic rim. When I was 8 years old my friend told me she had Super Mario so of course we went to her house. Her parents thought it was okay to let her mentally handicapped older brother, probably around 15. Wander around the house naked with a gigantic erection casually jerking it from room to room. The room with the Nintendo was just a mattress, no sheets, and the TV. So at one point he went into the other room and grabbed a chair, set it right down next to the TV facing us and went to town. Her mother walked into the room and let us know it was time for dinner, food stamp breakfast cereal, and the kid barely touched his food, just constant jerking off while they all ignored it like it was no big deal. I had a friend in high school whose family used a G.I. Joe aircraft carrier as a coffee table. 102 liter soda bottles filled with urine because the toilet is broken. But where was he pooping where was he pooping? I had a friend who did this. He'd crap in a pizza box then take the box outside and put it in the bin for his building. It was a couple of months before he realized the pizza boxes had his name and flat number written on them. My parents were in a bowling league and would bring me with them. I made friends with a girl who hung out at the bowling alley because she lived in a home on an acre next to it. She invited me to come to her house while my parents bowled. We walked to her house, and when I walk in there is a lion cub chained to a coffee table in the front room. She asks me if I want to pet the lion. Of course I do. I pet the lion. We hang out, and I go back to the bowling alley like nothing happened. I tell my parents and they are like sure you pet a lion. Years later when I am reading the paper. The girl and her family are arrested for illegally having exotic cats. I show my parents and have the best told you so moments in my life. Not me, but when my dad was younger he went to a friend's house who had a hallway with nude family pictures. A couple I know have some rather amorous shots of themselves up in the living room. They are into photography so there are a lot of normal pictures of travel and animals, and then a few where he is obviously plowing her good. One of my wife's co-workers invited us to a dinner party. He's a very accomplished doctor who is, supposedly, considered the foremost authority in his specialty. I knew the man had a huge ego but nothing prepared me for what I saw when we went to his home. As soon as we walked in the door there was a life-size painting of himself that one of his patients had given him as a gift. Nothing strange about that. He saved a patient's life and they were very grateful so they gave him a painting. His wife takes our jackets. Hangs them up then walks us to his massive living room where the rest of the guests are mingling. As I looked around the room to take in what a magnificent home this man has I noticed that there are hundreds of pictures lining his shelves and walls. Every single one of those pictures was of him. Not of his wife. Not of his four children. Not of his siblings. Parents. Or someone he admires. Even the pictures that looked like they may have been group photos were cropped so that only he could be seen. I'm terrible at hiding my true feelings. My face usually gives me away every time but I spent the next hour desperately trying to pretend like this wasn't remotely strange. After a few drinks I decided to head to the bathroom. I had to take a dump and I'm not shy about doing so at another person's home. I walked into their guest bathroom, closed the door, lifted up the lid, sat down and grabbed one of a dozen books that were sitting next to the toilet. The first book I picked up is written by our host. So I picked up another book and it is also written by our host. I looked at the book ends and all of them are written by our host. Part amused and part disgusted I looked up and noticed there is a picture on a small table across from the toilet. It's our host again, staring at me in the picture while I'm taking a dump. 
I was visiting a friend one time and we were about to go buy a 30 rack at the nearby liquor store. I tell him we need to stop by an ATM so I can pick up some cash to pay. He just turns and looks at me and goes, don't worry about it, we can just go to the money drawer. This kid's family literally kept a drawer full of $20 bills in the kitchen that you could just walk up to and grab whenever you needed something. It was pretty surreal. I need a money drawer. I have a change jar, but that doesn't seem like it compares to a money drawer. When I was in college I played the drums in a band and we would often practice at the guitar player's house because his parents didn't care about the noise. The family was weird and the house smelled, but the thing that got me was the filth. There was always dog poop somewhere and I don't think they ever flushed or cleaned a toilet. All of this was considered normal to them. Then one day the guy that played guitar walked over to the corner of the room and peed on the floor. I was stunned. He wasn't drunk or anything like that. This was normal to him. His parents didn't care either. It was just how they did things. My friend refuses to vacuum and her carpet is covered in a layer of loose hair. I know a guy whose entire home has a layer of dog and cat hair on everything. He told me, if I vacuum the hair, there's gonna be hair on everything in like 30 minutes, so I just don't vacuum it. Dog crap. Old, crusty, along with fresh and smelly pit bull crap, all over the living room, while he just sit and watch TV in the room, as if it wasn't even there. Yeah, this was my house. Yeah, this was my roommate. I'd pick it up, let the dog out try to housebreak it. He did nothing. As I packed up my stuff to move out, I stopped picking up the dough, thinking he'd man up. Nope. I had to step around those massive landmines as I moved out. My direct response to a roommate's dog crapping on my floor was to bag it up and drop it in his lap. Your responsibilities are in my way. Clean up your dog's crap. A white carpeted kitchen. That's living on the freaking edge. You have been visited by the hangover papa. Comment, do a recover, papa, and you will never suffer from hangover again. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video, or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people QA.